Howdy y'all, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. Recently, I revealed in a video about Philadelphia that I am a Keystone Stater, a Pennsylvanian. And with the impending doom of the upcoming school year and the inevitable dread of winter, I thought I would make a lighthearted video to remind everyone of the beauty and possibilities of the winter time. While many Old World videos will focus on the miraculous and at times unexplainable construction and design of the Old World, one aspect that I haven't heard mentioned much, besides in my own previous videos, are the ice palaces of the 1800s. These palaces, which themselves are extraordinary feats of ingenuity, are seldom referenced when discussing the history of the Old World, yet we're told these palaces played an interesting, if not complex, history in the areas in which they were constructed. That history of the Ice Palace is one that is usually shrouded in mystery. In previous entries, I've made reference to the mini Ice Age that occurred in various regions on the Earth at various times between 1300 and 1850. Not only does this mini Ice Age line up with our ever-growing understanding of reset timelines, but we can also establish the use of ice homes, sometimes referred to as ice palaces, during this mini Ice Age period. Now what's really remarkable to me, and the reason I made this video, is to share some of these oldest images of the ice palaces with you. These will be images from the mid to late 1800s, as well as a few from the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. Of note, in my brief research, I can find evidence of elaborate, massive, and almost to the point of gaudy ice castles being founded in the mid to late 1800s, and these castles appear to use immense ice blocks which according to the narrative are fished out of local lakes and rivers and then cut into place by masons. However, at the same time we're told that these blocks being fished out of the river and then cut into place would require four to five men per block and then we are told each ice palace consisted of, on average, well over 1,000 individual ice blocks. So that is quite an amount of work. For what could be considered to be a novelty or seasonal palace. At least that is what I first thought and then I did a little bit more digging and found a little bit more interesting information. Now apparently many if not all of these ice palaces of the late 1800s had the amenities of a real life palace. From fully furnished interiors to ice rinks to entire community centers which held concerts and shows, and most interestingly, even in the 1880s and onward, electricity. These ice palaces appear to have been constructed with the utmost attention to detail. Now, these ice palaces in the 1800s can be found all around the world. I'm still mastering the use of translation to be able to search Google and other sources in different languages, but from what I was able to find, ice palaces were constructed all throughout Europe, many of them in Russia and in China, and a great amount of them existed in the United States and Canada, especially during the turn of the century period. From the 1800s into the 1900s, some of the most famous ice palaces, which I've included photographs of in this video, could be found in Ottawa, Montreal, St. Paul, Minnesota, and Chicago. I'm sure there are hundreds of other ice palaces that once existed throughout the world. And as the evidence alludes to, I'm going to make a request that if there's anyone out there that is familiar with their local history or knows of any unique ice palace photographs that were not displayed in this video, please leave a link down below because I think me and the rest of the viewers of this video would really love to check those out.
the last part of the video, I'd like to focus on the amazing Harbin Ice Festival in China. I wanted to remain in the old world, but something really important that started to stand out to me is the fact that while in the 1800s, we have these elaborate, breathtaking palaces made of ice that are being built worldwide, at least according to the current narrative, by the early 1900s, these palaces become lackluster and uninspired. The appeal of their mystery appears to have faded on the public by this time, and the ice palaces and their design appears to suffer. Whether this was to hide the old world construction of the previous palaces or to deter interest in the history of them, we do have a marked resurgence in ice palace construction beginning in the 1930s and the 1940s, but for a large period of time from the late 1800s through the early to mid 1900s, we can see a blatant loss of knowledge in building these ice palaces. And that brings me back to China and the Harbin Ice Festival, which is a yearly festival held in China, which represents the best artistic and architectural construction using ice and snow. I wasn't going to include recent images of ice palaces and castles in this video, but having never seen any sort of ice work like this before, I thought it was prudent that I share these unique designs and images with you. fact that these come back every year and the palaces are new and the designs are new every year it really does sort of tie to the old world and the different ice palaces that were being constructed back then now these ice and snow buildings in china mixing the use of electricity clearly indicate the possibilities that sculpting and building with ice creates The details on these snow sculptures are truly remarkable, and if I could ever make my way to one ice festival, it would probably be the Harbin Ice Festival in China, because I would be shocked by everything I would see there. So hopefully this video was interesting to you, and in conclusion, I just wanted to share these unique and very interesting images of the 1800s ice palaces with you. I wanted to give you a brief narrative on these buildings, but realistically, as in most of these old world videos that I make, I believe the images speak for themselves and the whole idea that we could build in these massive, elaborate, ice brick designs incorporating electricity only to have these palaces last for the winter time and by the end of the season be gone is very reminiscent to me of the world's fairs and those disposable, if you wanna call them that, buildings which we've discussed before. It's confusing information that I felt was really important to share with you, just to show you the level of design that we had in all sorts of things. At least that's what the narrative says, and that's what we attribute to this time period. So let me know in the comments down below if you've heard of these ice palaces before. Let me know anything that stands out to you, and I will talk to you on the very next video.